this video, we're going to look at running a Photometrix Prime 95B inside Nikon Elements. So we're going to load up Elements to start with. Here we're using version 5. And we're going to load up the Photometrix drivers. So here we are inside Elements. So the first thing we want to do is activate our live preview mode. But here you see the contest isn't particularly good because we don't have our auto scaling active. So to activate auto scaling, you can go up to the LUTs toolbar here, the lookup tables toolbar, and make sure that you have the lookup tables window visible. You can also right click on the gray space on the right hand side and go to visualization controls, LUTs. So we want to turn on our LUTs and turn on auto scaling. With auto scaling, we can specify a percentage of the brightest and darkest pixels that we want the auto scale to ignore. This can help filter out any noise at the top end, as well as improve our contrast. So here we've chosen to ignore 2% at the bottom end because we have a large amount of black and 0.5% at the top end. You can play with this to find what gives you the best results. The Prime 95B has two readout rates possible. One is suitable for high speeds and the other is suitable for high dynamic range. We can change this by changing the bit depth in the Prime 95B settings in the top right. 12-bit, the mode we're in at the moment, is for high speeds. So here we run at 82 frames per second full frame with a maximum value in each pixel of 4096. If that's not enough dynamic range, say if we had a long exposure time, for example 100 milliseconds, you see here we overexpose, then we need to use the 16-bit mode which goes all the way up to 65,000. However, this runs at half the frame rates of about 41 frames per second. And finally, we can just click this button to use the maximum exposure time that still gives us the full frame rate of the camera. If you find that your signals are too weak, you can use binning, meaning you group pixels together. And here we are trading resolution for sensitivity. If you're only interested in a small part of the image and want to increase acquisition speed or reduce file size, you can use a region of interest. If we specify these with this little dialog box, you can either specify an exact size and position if you know exactly where something is in your field of view, or you can just say something to start out with and then drag and manipulate your box as you want. So let's focus on this little stringy bit here. So now we have a 270 by 120 ROI. And in the 16-bit mode, we're running at around 400 frames per second. In the 12-bit mode, we'll be running at roughly double this. Of course, as this is a SCMOS camera, the number of columns doesn't actually matter in our acquisition rate. So if we go to the full 1200 columns by 120 lines, we still run at 400 frames per second. One area in which the 95B particularly excels is in low-light imaging but the display of this data can sometimes be a little difficult. So here we have a very grey image. This is what you get if you don't specify your auto scale to ignore any of the brightest and dark darkest pixels. So here we're ignoring 0% of each. If we change this to 1, instantly we get a better picture. But to get the most contrast out of the image, we need to ignore as much of the bottom end noise as possible. That means setting the proportion of the darkest pixels that we ignore to the maximum value that elements will allow, which is 10%. And you see instantly our contrast pops a little bit more. Another feature that's available with the Prime 95B for low light imaging in particular is our Prime Enhanced Denoising algorithm. This is an algorithm that runs on the camera head and removes some of the noise from your images. So here we have a fairly low light image and the Prime Enhance algorithm will cut out a lot of the noise from a 1024 by 1024 region in the centre of the image. So it makes sense to specify this region of interest now, which conveniently is one of the Nikon Elements defaults. And now we go to the Prime 95B settings to activate denoising. And instantly you can see the contrast and the signal quality pop. We get a significant improvement in our signal to noise. If we go to an even lower light situation, the difference is even stronger. If I turn denoising on and off, you can see the difference that this makes. 
One very important thing to note about the Prime Enhance algorithm is that it conserves all of your signal strengths, your signal values, so you can still run analysis on the data. If you wanted to see a line profile or measure a signal strength, say of this little object here, Prime Enhance will preserve the values. It's just effectively giving you a longer exposure time, increasing your signal to noise. So here if we turn Prime Enhance on, you can see the level of noise is instantly reduced, but our signal values at these two peaks are preserved. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact Photometrics.